Hello everyone, welcome back to another tactic video. So, um, we are going to be focusing on Coventry City today and Mark Robbins. So you guys can see in the background, I do have a Coventry City scarf. It's really hard to do when looking at the screen. I should just look behind me and point. But, um, yeah, I've been to Coventry City game before, so I have witnessed this team in person. I don't think a single player has left from the team I witnessed. Actually, no, uh, O'Hare. Uh, actually is. I think I saw him when he first joined on loan. I can't remember exactly, but I... I Oh, Godden. I've seen Godden as well. So I, I've seen a, I've seen a few people from uh, from when that team existed. But Mark Robbins was still there at the time, which is crazy to think. A few years ago now when I saw them. Um, back when they were still playing at Birmingham Stadium, which was kind of the funny thing. So I went to Birmingham to see Coventry play Sunderland in League One, I think. Was it League One at the time? I don't remember if it was League One or the Championship. I don't remember which division it was. I think it might have been the Championship. I don't know. I've been to a lot of championship and League One games. I've never been to League Two. Still on my bucket list. Um, but yeah, so we're focusing on them today. Um, now, I um, am going to be on vacation, so this is going to be a bit of a shorter one. Uh, I leave tomorrow, and I've done some work ahead of time for this, but I just have had a very busy week, so it's been tough to really put loads of effort into this tactic. Um, and I apologize for that, but as you guys know, life goes on, there's things going on, I've had job interviews, I've had other things like that going on this week, so not the easiest for me to focus on this stuff, which you guys know as I tweeted about it and let you guys know about all the info. But, so, yeah, unfortunately, also in the US, we do not have good access to championship highlights. Now, in ESPN shows maybe one to two games a game week, and besides that, the highlights here are really short. They are about two minutes, they show the goals, and maybe a good save. And that's about it. There is rare extended highlights, only really for the marquee games. And I could not find many extended highlights for Coventry. I don't have a VPN, uh, so I used to. I stopped because I don't use it enough. Maybe I need to re-get that. But yeah, I've not been able to watch loads of highlights, so I've really struggled to figure out exactly what I want the two players in the double pivot to do when they're playing the 4-2-3-1. Uh, I think I figured out all the other positions, so I do apologize for that. But I've done my best, and what I've managed to do is match nearly everything statistically. <laughs> so I have the guys that have the most passes, the most everything, like everything is good. So instead of doing the normal tactic thing to show you guys, just because I don't really have a great thing to show... I'll talk, I can talk about a few things, but I'm not going to be able to talk about build out and other stuff, so it'll be very small. We're going to talk a little bit more about the statistics and how the stats and other things like that match up in terms of what we're expecting to see from those players compared to how the stats uh, in-game compared to the stats to show you guys that we really nailed down a lot of that, and it's very, very similar. So we'll be a lot more in-depth talking about like center backs with the passing, the other like certain players, shots, dribble, all those things like that. They match up incredibly, incredibly well. So I've managed to get all that stuff to match and mesh great in terms of that and not as I don't know totally in terms of all the stuff but I know the st I know a good amount of how the team plays and just apologies on that to you guys I wish I could be better but I just don't I don't have the facilities <laughs> to do it I am unemployed I don't have loads of money to go and spend willy-nilly on things to get access to all this stuff like that um and that stuff so it does suck in that sense but if you guys do know any recommendations in America to find some of the best um uh, things in terms of like Pretty much the best place to watch the championship outside of uh, ESPN Plus. Do you recommend? I'd love to know because it'd be easier for me to do some of these videos because I adore the championship and I love it. I mean, I watch championship games all the time, so it's the best I can. But again, it's very select in terms of what I can watch. So sorry about that. Obviously, a little longer intro, but we got things rolling. I'm really excited to show you guys what we've done. I'm really happy with what I've seen, and uh, and yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, everyone. So, as I mentioned, we are going to mostly just be talking some about the stats and looking at the player stuff. This is mainly due to the fact that I just, I've had a crazy busy week and it's been tough to get this video out. As I mentioned, I had tons of stuff going on with interviews and other things like that. So it's just been really busy. I also leave for vacation. It's just, this has not been the best week to make a video. <laughs> but I still want to put some work in and get something out and I've gotten something together for you guys. So, um, one of the big things first we do need to mention about Coventry this season has been their change uh, of various systems. So if we talk about it, Coventry usually, uh, from what I saw, played mainly with a uh, played mainly like this. 
So they mainly played like this, um, right? It was three, four, sorry, I can pull this up right here. Three, four, one, two. So this is mainly what they played for most of the season. So if we look back at the season from match week one until match week 15, the team used this system. That was the main system they used. Now, things really struggled around that time. They weren't doing great. They lost four in a row. They hadn't scored. They'd only won three in the opening 15 games. It was really, really bad. So, Robbins decided to change things, and he changed to this, a 4-2-3-1 formation. Now, this change was very, very prosperous, and from match week 16 to uh, the last round of the FA Cup where they played Maidstone... They have they've reverted back to the three four one two due to some injuries. Um, the team which used this or a more defensive line version where they dropped the wingers back and uh, had them playing in the more defensive line, so it was a four four one one. So that's just the more defensive version of this system, uh, but still playing this style. They lost only three games: one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. 12, 13. They won 13 games, <laughs> lost three, and drew seven. So they, they were unreal. Like, they've just been absolutely demolishing teams. It's been so, so good. Their defense has been really good as well. They concede just about a goal a game still, but they've just been amazing in terms of how well they've played. They've been scoring goals. It's been incredible. They beat Oxford 6-2 in the FA Cup as well, which was pretty damn impressive. Beat Sheffield to Wednesday 4-1. Maidstone 5-0 as well. But they did really, they beat Leicester in the stretch, 3-1 as well. So that's another really, uh, really big achievement. They drew Southampton. They drew Leeds. So you can see what I mean. They did really, really well. They beat Millwall 3-0 as well. But they had a really, really great game where they, great games where they had a really great stretch, where they're dominating teams, doing really solid work. And that can be shown with this formation and the change to it, it really allowed key players to thrive and show what they could do. And one of the key players we're going to talk about is uh, Sakamoto, Sakamoto, who has just been unreal for this team this season. Now, he's injured in real life, which is why they changed back to the three at the back. But the change and putting him on the right wing has been just amazing for the team. It has made such a big difference this season and is one of the big reasons they have done so much better because of that now. And it's it really has to be come down to Robin's ingenuity and brilliance at the role. I mean, if we do look... We can, we do look here, um, go to club info. We look at Mark Robbins. He's been here since 2017, right? So he's been here for ages at this point. So in real life, he's been here for so long. He knows how the team works. He knows how the team goes and he continues to just be able to adjust and adapt with this side. And it's so true to see. So it's one of those things that like, you have to really acknowledge and understand he's just been amazing at and his ability to change between these and, and utilize that is really good. Now, obviously, we need to focus on wing play here. And if you do notice, we are tactical styles of wing play using this system, which is exactly what Robbins likes to do. So because of that, we're in we're in good stead. We followed that along. But the stuff that I mainly want to start talking about first is with this system is the change to having a little more possession. So the team is definitely focused a lot more on having possession in it, and you can see it by the amount of people in possession. So if we go and look at general play, pass is completed, and we look here at real life. Top two people in real life, Bobby Thomas, uh, Joe Labodier, and Josh Eccles. Eccles, right? Guess what? Kitching played more than Le Labodier, or whatever you say his name. So our two main center backs, which is their two main center backs in real life, and then the, and then the center mid. Boom, we've nailed it on the money. Then it's Vanuik, Sheaf to Silva. We've got Venu we've got Vanuik, Sheaf, and Bidwell, which they have to Silva, but Bidwell's just played more for us because the Silva plays left back. So the same thing. And then you have more defenders. And it's just exactly what we have. And then you finally get to then right around that, you get naked to these two. So we're like on the money for passes. They're perfect, lined up in the amount of people making the passes, completing the passes. And it's similar amounts too. Now, obviously, you have a less number in real life, but about 1,500 for Thomas, 
about uh, 1,300 in the next guy. That's, I mean, we have a bit of a drop off to the next one. But then the next group around that 1K to uh, 1,300 mark in real life. So we have a little more than that as well. So it's just perfect numbers to see that. Um, it's fantastic. So it's all all stuck together and really great in that sense. And you love it's perfect. Like we've nailed it on the money with all the passing and that stuff, which is just so, so good. And if we go on and take a look at even when it comes to goals and shots as well. So if we go to stats and we look to goal attempts and things like that, we take a look at shots. Haji Wright having the most shots. We take a look. Guess who's the most shots? Haji Wright. Guess who's next? Ellis Sims. Guess who's next? It's Godin is next, but I think they played Sims more. I, I think my AI didn't rotate in the other striker as much. I mean, if we take a look at God, Neely played 23 games while Sims played 34. And in this, Gooden's, yeah, Gooden, yeah, Gooden and Sims have played the same amount of games. So it's just, a, I think that's just more the, the game doing it. But even the next is Sims, then it's Sakamoto. And then besides that, you have Palmer, then O'Hare, which we do as well. And then it's just on the money again and again and again. It's just perfect. And then you have Eklis, uh, uh, which would be Seif, I'm assuming, just played because those two were in the middle. Then you have uh, Venuik as well, who we have up there. So it just, it, it's hitting it all the stats the right players are doing it. it's matching it perfectly we then say look at goals right haji right sakamoto we look at this we go it's right sims sakamoto those three are the top just like we talked about then it's o'hare torp played a lot uh instead of um o'hare for some reason i don't know why but it's just i don't choose the ai does the ai is weird they they pick players and I, I just sim it. So, but again, the play, people playing in those positions are doing the right things, right? So you have that, which is great. Then you have Godin, and then you have the fullbacks as well. And then the center backs just popping up, which the next, it, it, that's where the goals get shaky. This is kind of random, but the main people are kind of these guys here, which see we right on the money again, a perfect with that, which is just so it's fantastic. And even shots in total, even, uh, this is shots on target, right? We look at shots on target. It's Sims, right? Godin and Sakamoto, which is I think what we see. Then it's the tens. Then it's the six and Sheaf. And I mean, then it just goes kind of random. Some players that it's kind of short, but still, it's we're nailing it on the money. All the people that are having shots on target, it's the same exact thing. It's exactly what we want to see. So it's perfectly right on the money. Also, if you want to check all these stats to check what I'm looking at, you can go to FB Ref, type in Coventry City, and look at 2023, 2024 Coventry City in the Championship stats. But I'm looking at exclusively here. I'm only looking at Championship. Um. But I fully implore you to check this. Feel free to check me on this because it's there. You can find it. But it's fantastic how perfectly on the money we're nailing all of these things here. So if you next, you want to go to, say, stuff like XG and things like that as well. You can even just see it's pretty good. I mean, I, I can pull up XG as well here, but it doesn't really make too much sense. I mean, Haji Wright has the highest XG in the team, but he also takes penalties in real life. I don't know who took the penalties in this, so that could be it as well. Um... That obviously changes things. I just don't know how all that stuff has worked. So we'll see. Again, I, I didn't I didn't check who took all the penalties. But yeah, you can see the shots, the passing. It all matches up really, really well. Um, I don't know if it has crossing. Yeah, it does. Okay, yeah, here. General play has more stuff. So um, we'll look at uh, crosses. Let me just pull this up. Sorry, I have to kind of move around this thing a little bit. Crosses. We look at crom uh Crosses, Venuik, Sakamoto. So here, annoying. Uh, they they have one of their center mids who has the most, but I think he might have played a little wider. Or did he mainly play? No, he's mainly played as a DM. So I guess he he might be the one that takes set pieces, which will adjust this. Uh, but then if you look at just otherwise though, Venuik most crosses, Sakamoto. Guess what? In this Venuik, Sakamoto, Bidwell, top three, all perfect. Then you have the, <laughs> then you have Torp, who's the ten. But we have Torp actually there as well in real life, right on the stat sheet. And then you have uh, the center mids, which is where we then uh, kind of drop off. It kind of changes around a little bit. Uh, but that's where we're really short on the amount of crosses. While this is uh, a little different here. So it's just one of those things that I find so funny because it's just it, it's just the way that AI has it. But, you know, it's uh, it matches it really, really well, the main crossers. Also, the guys at the top here, Venuik, Sakamoto, Bidwell, Da Silva, they're like the main guys by a country mile here. So if you guys do see here, it's the same thing we're talking about here. It's these guys are up there as like the main ones. And then after that, it drops off a lot. This Torp, it drops off so much too. But you have mainly the fullbacks and the the right, the two right-sided guys and then the left fullback. 
Unfortunately, De Silva didn't seem to play as much, I'm guessing. No, he played on the left more. That's why he doesn't have as many. Because uh, Bidwell played left back, yeah, pretty much the whole time, which is why he has more, more crosses attempted. And Torp probably played on the right, too. Yeah, he played it all on the right, which is why he's got a lot of crosses. So, but you can see, though, it's the, main, it's the right mid, the left back, and the right back are the ones that are having the most crosses, which is exactly what we're looking to replicate. So, again, it's just on the money in terms of that stuff. It's perfectly... Uh, it's perfectly on the stretch right like that, right exactly in line with everything that we are looking to do. Um, next, I do want to look at some tackling and defending, so we'll take a look at that. All right. Uh, we are going to move on to defending, as I mentioned. So we look at uh, tackles, the people with the most tackles. Um, tackles attempted. Good. There we go. We see Vanuik and Bidwell. In real life, it's the center mids uh, for this team who have the most tackles, which I did try to get, because if you do look um, in the system, I do have them with a ball winning midfielder on defend and tackle more on the deep-lying playmaker. So the, it is... I am trying to get them to get more, but unfortunately, they just didn't make as many tackles, which is kind of annoying there. But, I mean, what are you going to do? But next is then comes the fullbacks and then the center backs. So if you do look, you have the fullbacks... And then you have the center mids. You also have Sakamoto up there as well. The Bodier and Thomas make a lot more tackles. Uh, they're kind of lower down the list, unfortunately, which I think is just kind of by the AI. Um, actually, I'm looking at tackles completed. Oh, no, I'm looking at tackles completed. Sorry, we need to change this to one. Uh, it doesn't change it too much. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong stat. That's my, my bad there. Um, but yeah, so it's... Not as uh, not as perfect as as I'd hope for this, but still the fullbacks and the right winger having a lot is really perfect to what we want to see because that is matches that. Then it comes to the ten, um, which is kind of lower down after the center back. So we have the main guys tackling the higher the ones up top doing more, but annoyingly it's we're aggravatingly the wrong guys making the most tackles. But I think it's also because of the way they play, the fullback sliding a lot, the central midfielder sliding over a lot more. Especially when they press to the sidelines, you'll see these guys slide over like this and slide over like this. And unfortunately, I just don't think the game had them do that as much. Because when I did try to put stay wider on them, uh, the game I got fired every time. I couldn't get a full season uh, because they would just score. There, you just look. There'd be tons of goals right here. It was pretty annoying. So, just something you had to do. I I had to do to get it working better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's something to focus on. But still, it's pretty good to see all that stuff completely uh, in unison there. We don't need to look at fouls because that's not really a problem at all, as that's just kind of whatever. Um, and then, uh, sorry, what's the the next thing I want to look at? What we did defensive, we did all that stuff like that. And yes, I wanted to look at possession next. Um, I don't. I forget where that would be. It's not in general play because you don't have a, uh, you don't have that. Okay. Uh, one second. I will uh pull that up and I will uh <laughs> I will I will get I'll create that little thing for you guys so we can take a look at that. All right. Well, I wasn't exactly getting perfectly what we wanted to, but we'll look at this just to finish off. Just a few more stats. Um. So we'll look at goal and shot creation a little bit as well. So if we do look at chances create. Oops. Chances created uh, per 90. Let me just pull that up here. So, goal creating actions per 90. Uh, <laughs> I love that hammers first. But uh, you can see that um, on top on top of the list is O'Hare, then Torp, then uh, Oh, God, why did I do that? Alright, annoyingly, um, I have messed this up somehow by by changing the page. So, uh, aggravatingly, I have... There we go. That'll give us more of what we need. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have that actual stat next to me. Alright, uh, my bad. I don't have chances created. Yeah, sorry, dang it. This is where FM and FB ref don't match up. This is just chances. I have shot creating, I have shot creating actions, and I have goal creating actions, but I don't have, it's going to do different things. I don't know how this is calculated compared to that. 
Um, I don't have key passes, do I? This is again the thing where like the different, it's the difference of looking at different things. But if we do want to look at uh, dribbles per 90 and stuff, uh, we can look at that just quickly, which is a, uh, oops. But if we do look, uh, we can see Sakamoto, Wright, and uh, Uick are the guy main guys doing a lot of the dribbling. We see Van Uick didn't do as much uh, in this, only having about 1.2, but Sakamoto and Wright right up there having the most dribbles per game. Um, oh, oops, let me go per 90. But if we go per 90, we see Palmer, Sakamoto, Venue can write up there. And you can see Palmer, yeah, Sakamoto write. So it's pretty similar in terms of all that stuff. Um, might as well get into the tech now, just because we are kind of running a little long. But yeah, that's in essence kind of looking at all that stuff like that, of what we're looking to see, just stuff matching up there and all those things, which is great, because that's what you want and what you hope to see from it. But with that all being said, um, when it comes down to the tactic, this is what we want to see. Um, it's a 4 2 3 one custom slate, goalkeeper on defend, no additional instructions, wing back on support, take more risks, cross more often, tackle harder. You could also hit dribble more as well, which I would probably suggest doing because that will be where you can get that, um, Benuick to dribble more. I just had it off, uh, just cause I figured he'd dribble a lot on his own. I didn't really need to tell him to cause also the backup players come in. So I'd probably say if you're going to have a, if you do do it with Coventry, Go to Venuic like this, go to personalized, click here, and then have dribble more. Just because the other players probably won't do it as much. Because if you guys, like, look at this guy, he's not the best at dribbling. Like, again, not the best dribbler. Well, if you look at Venuic, we got 12 dribbling, but he's got a lot of pace to burn, and he can do a lot better there. Where, in, where the other guys, I don't think you're going to trust it as much. But again, make your choice there. Uh, but I would say that's pretty much what you have. You can put dribble more on or off. It's up to you. Uh, ball playing defender on defend on the right side. You then have a central defender on defend. No additional instructions on the left. A fullback on support on the left with tackle harder. A ball winning midfielder on defend as your right defensive mid. A deep line playmaker on support with more direct passes. Dribble more, tackle harder as your deep line playmaker on support on the left defensive role. And this is backed up by, if we go look at things like, sorry, if I pull up pass types and we look at, uh, where is this? Live passes. Uh, we look at players with the most passes. The deep line playmaker has the most, has some of the most on the entire team besides the center backs. So they're insanely high with the amount of those they have. And if we look at through balls, uh, am I looking at per 90? No, if we're looking at through balls, these guys play some of the most. Uh, same with the advanced playmaker. So, they play some of the most through balls, which is why we have to take more risks and more direct, because their pass is also, if we do look at passing distance, which, um, where is here? If we look at, uh, the attempted for medium distance and long distance, we can see behind the center backs is the center midfielders. So, it's Sheaf and Eskels are the two that attempt the most long balls besides the the goalkeeper and the center back, but that's not surprising. Um, and that, so we just want to make sure they're going more direct with some of their passes there. It's also why um, we would take more risks on anyway because he plays a lot of them too. Uh, finally, at the right attacking mid-roll, we have, for Sakamoto, inverted winger on attack. No additional instructions there. It perfectly fits what we need him to do. The advanced playmaker on support uh, moved to channels because the ball does shift to the either side. So we want him moving into these channels to help support the team and offer uh, offer just possession uh, for himself. But then otherwise, just doing a lot of that. He also does press a lot too. So this guy's really keen on pressing. So if you do want to, I would suggest for certain opponents doing specific marking positions. This will quite be quite important. I'd especially say going on the DM or the deep line playmaker is probably your most important one because they will be tasked with pressing them pretty extensively. Uh, on the left, you have a inside forward on support with shoot more often. This is the Haji right role. Uh, this is the role where he does a lot of that work coming inside, being a second striker at times as well. Finally, you have the pressing forward on attack with shoot more often. Both these players, Sims and Wright, because Wright plays on the left now in this system, shoot a lot. So because they shoot a lot, we have shoot more often on. They have the most shots on the team. 
So that's something just to look out for. Um, finally, uh, when it comes to the instructions, is on a balanced mentality. Uh, the team is a fairly wide attacking width as they like to attack down the wings. They focus play down the left and the right. They're pretty distinct about that. They play with a slightly higher tempo. I wouldn't say they go incredibly fast, but they do tend to play a little bit around before going direct. Standard passing directness as they do like short plays before being very direct. They are really not that strict to the final third. They'll do a few different things, but overall team is quite direct. They like to counter and counter press. The front line does like to be aggressive and counter. They do like to go long out of the back sometimes, but they will also occasionally play short, so that's kind of a bit of a mixed bag there. Finally, because of the slow speed of the defenders, the team does tend to sit back in more standard depth. The front line does look to engage quickly and press quite high up the pitch, and they are very intense when it comes to that. They are very aggressive in the tackles, making some of the most tackles in the entire league. And if we look at defensive stats, they are second in tackles, in the entire league. <clears throat> they also drop the ball outside constantly. And if we look here, when we go to the competition and we look at team overview, we are number one in tackles one because we are highly aggressive and that's how they are in real life as well. There are only like five tackles off of Millwall who are in first. So pretty close to Cardiff as well. So yeah, they're most aggressive team in terms of tackles and that's just attempted. So and then not even tackles one where I think they're they're just behind in tackles one as well. But they're very, very aggressive, attempting loads and loads of tackles uh, for each. So that's just something to note them. But yeah, that is the tactic. That is our Coventry City side and the tactic that goes with it. Hope you guys uh, did enjoy this one. And it's uh, time to roll the outro. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you guys had a enjoyable time watching this video. Not the same style as we usually have. A little more focused on the statistics and that info there. But, you know, it's good to see, and uh, I enjoy kind of having that stuff uh, to show off because it's a bit different from what I normally do, but it still is good and, and enjoyable to watch, I feel, because you get a nice glimpse into what that is and how that stuff works. So, I don't know, for me, it's neat. I'm a stats person. I love doing that stuff. That's what I did a lot in my job. So, it's fun to match that stuff up and working hard to do that stuff. So, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed a little more of that approach. Obviously, reasons why, but just stuff that I thought was interesting for that. So... Yeah, hope you guys did like that. Um, if you did enjoy, remember to like and subscribe. If you guys are enjoying all these tactic videos, I know obviously we've gone from one, two to one a week, and it's all weekend stuff now, which is, uh, sorry about that, but had to do it with life and all this stuff, so that's not something kind of sad. I've seen viewers and stuff drop, but understandably so. Less videos out, not as much views and things. But um, the good thing is, is that we're going to stick in England for next week. We're going to focus on Gary O'Neill's Wolves. Uh, man, just got a new contract as well, so it's a good time to talk about them and talk about what they've been doing so well over in uh, Wolverhampton. So I'm not sure. I know a few Wolves fans that I will probably be excited about that. But yeah, some good stuff to look at there. I know that'll be an exciting one to come next week. That'll be the 17th. Um, uh, yeah, that's probably going to be... That's, that's that for now. So yeah. Hope you guys did enjoy. Remember to like and subscribe at the notification bell so you miss out on any future videos. And I'll be sure to catch you guys next week where we take a look at Gary O'Neill's Wolves.